because I have a very special guest on tonight. I'm producing this one myself, so it's not going to be as fancy, but my guest is fancy. So, all right, I'm going to add you now, Jordan. I have to do one of these numbers. Okay. I'm adding. I hope you're watching, Jordan. Do, where are you? He's not watching yet. He's not watching yet. Go to my page, Jordan, and watch so I can add you. Hi. What's shaking? Hola. Hola, Alejandro. Hello. Hey, Jordan. There you are. All right, now I'm going to add you. Okay, hi. It's really close. Um, can you request join, Jordan? If you can go down onto that and do request to join. Okay, I'm looking for you. And you are on your mobile device, correct? Can you go find that request join button? Hi. Hello. I'm gonna try to do it from my laptop here. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna close that down. Okay. Hello. All right. Sup, Dabman? Oh, there he is. All right, bring him on camera. Adding. Not sure it looks funky to me. Hi. Hello, Juan. Hello, Mark. Hello. Give me some love. It's still buffering, but it says it's adding you, Jordan. <gasps> there we go. Hey, how are you? There we go. Hey. Man, I was worried for a minute. I know. You know what? <laughs> I've had a lot worse <laughs> happen before. So, um, Sorry about that. We're, I'm going to start off by saying, hi, Hody, um, that I am not an ultimately professional producer. Um, generally, if I do some, I, I have uh, my friends help produce it, and they do a wonderful job. However, um, I think people like authentic and fun, and so we're going to do that. And we've already got some great viewership. Greetings. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. There's, so there's 24 people or so watching right yeah, now. Yeah, it'll 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 start to shoot up there. Um, oh, people are so nice. So, Jordan. Hey, here's a question for you, yeah. Trisha. Can you can you can you hear can you hear this? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yay! Right. I just want to I just want to make sure. Yeah. No. Okay. Because awesome. I'm just I I have I have this. This is what I have. Yeah, I have so. Okay. Um. Oh, hello, Pete. Hello, Brian. So I do like to just kind of chit chat in the beginning because that's how we get engagement um and then you know sure sure if anybody wants to yes there's going to be live music hody i don't know if you know who hody johns is but he's he's pretty much a badass in the liberty movement <laughs> i think i was on his show We're, recently uh we are libertarians I think yeah so. he does yeah he hosts sure on there the guy's name was hody <laughs> oh yeah. please uh dadman's going to share this to liberty means 3.0 which you guys if if you can't find the actual real Liberty memes, I mean, not that there's, there's some other great pages, but 3.0. So it'll be there too. You'll have a lot of yeah. friends. Yeah, Jordan was. Okay, you were on Hody's show. Yeah. Um, so some people don't know who you are. A lot of people do. 
Um, so we're just going to start off, we're obviously going to get to the most important uh, thing that we want to talk about, which is your new song. Um, and it's going to be benefiting mm -hmm. uh, the legal fund for Schaefer Cox. But that's correct. But we want to know a little bit about you. And also, I'm going to make you play a little game. So even though a lot of the topics very serious, um, I'm not that serious of a person. <laughs> so I do like to have a little okay. bit of fun. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll, we'll right. dig down into the nitty gritty. Um, okay. So your story, your liberty story, you're a Christian, you're a singer songwriter, yes. and you're a voluntarist. Very much so. Okay. So as, as evidenced. Here. Yeah, I got my abolish it on. That's awesome. Um, so nice. were you born were you born a voluntarist? Oh no, God. No. Okay, so Jordan Well actually, you know, I, I think children are inherently libertarian at least. I know all of my children have have demonstrated that on their own. Uh, I think if you raise kids with a with a good moral center, they you know, they 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 figure out what's just and what's unjust. Right. You know, um, voluntarism was a process for me when I had my big awakening that the world was not the world that I thought it was. Um, I started out, you know, waving the Constitution in everyone's face really hard. Um, I thought that was the answer uh, in the very beginning, you know, and then I just I, you know, I, it's like you learn you learn so much when you go down the slippery slope mm -hmm. of. Of, of libertarian thought. And, you know, anarchism is the scary word. Voluntarism is the safe word. And, you know, for, for me, it was, it was a matter of, it was less than a year when I, when I really went, went, went hardcore down the libertarian slide uh, into the full voluntarist uh, thought process. But, but it was painful, Trish. Yeah. It was really, you, you got to give up, you got to give up all of these preconceived notions, illusions, traditions that are drilled into you from birth. Right. I mean, we, we live in a control grid that, and, and I was raised by the state. I was raised in public schools and I was not taught to be a critical thinker. And I, I could have cared less about what any of you people think about anything. I thought people that protested things had nothing better to do. They're all snowflakes that to... hung out at Starbucks. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. yeah. Or they, or, or they just wanted to be seen protesting something. Yeah. That's how, that's how naive I was back then. And, um, you know, I was raised in a fairly democratic sort of house. Okay. You know, we, 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 we hated Republicans. Oh, really? And... I grew up the opposite way. I was a neocon. Hardcore. <laughs> well, that's my, that was my folks. I've turned them much more libertarian since then. Cause I've hammered libertarianism into their skulls since 2000 and, seven you know it's been an ongoing thing maybe but they're I, just I pretending a, a, so you'll stop <laughs> well you know that actually could be <laughs> i can be a little relentless with my family but uh you know it, it it was very painful you can ask my wife i was a miserable sob to live with for two years from 2007 to 2009 it was hard to be around me because i was pissed off all the mm -hmm. time uh i i was up till four in the morning every night learning about all the horrible things going on in the world that you know i had been blinded to uh -huh. but i started putting two all the all the dots together and and realized that this is something that god was calling me to do calling me to speak out against against war corruption uh you know just there, there's a long laundry list of abuses that the uh that the powers that ought not be uh perpetrate against humanity and we poor saps are all just blind to it and, and clinging to our creature comforts and our technology and, and not paying attention to, as our rights are taken away. I mean, and, and so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't turn away from that once I knew the truth. And I felt very strongly that God had called me to that service and to that mission. So there's no way I was gonna tell him no, mm -hmm. but I didn't even know there were people like you out there. I didn't know that there was anybody else who understood this besides me. That's, that's how in the dark I was. That's how disconnected I was. And uh, I wrote this song, Pendulum. Uh, it was the first political song I ever wrote, and it, it changed everything. It, and, and I wrote it not knowing anything. I wrote it in the middle of the night. I woke up from a dream and wrote it. Yeah. And it changed my life, and, and now here we are. I know what song that is. And uh, we just, at the top of this, because I see she's watching, my friend Leanne, who actually commented on some posts 
uh, really yeah, cool libertarian. Yeah, she's a huge, yeah, she's such a huge fan of yours, and she mentioned that, and some other, yeah, she loves Pendulum, see? We see you, Leanne. So, big shout Hi, out. Leanne. She's an awesome <laughs> lady. Super smart. She's a mini status still, but I joke with her. <laughs> you, you know, I catch, I catch myself in, in status moments even now. You know, yeah. it's, it's like you have to just locate, zero in on your status and we get rid of it as every, every chance you get. And I love those national parks. I'm not going to lie. I mean, I know. <laughs> I know they can be <laughs> privatized, but they're a lot of fun. Um, too bad. National it, parks. It, like, that's even a real I thing. Know. Like, like there's any such thing as federal land. Yeah. <laughs> these, two, these two, like, federal land. This is an oxymoron. Uh, you know, yeah. like, there's no such thing as federal land. So that's, uh, yeah. Let me ask you this then, and I'm just, I mean, I have an outline here that I want to go down, but I stray from it a lot because I have ADHD, which I think is a net positive in life. But um, what would be, what is your uh, opinion on borders? Because we're talking about national parks and lands. Do you think that people collectively can own half a continent? What do you think about that? Boy, you, you, you really <laughs> right want to give me a gotcha, a gotcha <laughs> question, right? So here's, here's the thing. I mean, look at the natural state of human beings. We, we are a, we're, we're a violent species, and, and, and we defend what we perceive as ours violently. And along comes government, mm -hmm. which is the bane of our existence, always has mm -hmm. been, centralized involuntary government has always been the bane of, of humanity. You know, I have no problem with people banding together for mutual advantage and cooperation as long as it's voluntary. Uh -huh. Okay, so you, can, you, you can't look at, at the United States, which is a, which is a controlled uh, control grid plantation where we are all locked into a number of, of giant pre-existing systems we were born into. And and, and say, you know, like as an anarchist, I can say, this is what I want to have happen. But if I got what I really, if I got what I wanted tomorrow, it would be absolute chaos because there would be this massive power vacuum mm -hmm. and people would lose their minds and they would be killing each other left and right. And I don't want that. I want to slowly help the human race evolve into this. So like, like decentralization. and. Mm -hmm. Decentralization. That's why I'm so big on Bitcoin and blockchain. Mm -hmm. I'm a partner in a blockchain development company. We're trying to build systems to help humanity, you know, evolve out of centralized government, right. you know, and, and, and to help. And if we're going to have any any government at all, have it pay for itself and, and, and have it not be stealing uh, through violence and coercion, and intimidation and force from the people, have it have it do what it do what its intended purpose is to is not uh like like like, like what's on paper not what its actual purpose is which is to subvert our rights right. and subvert our power and enslave us essentially so when we're talking about the border what are we really talking about i mean it, is any of the is any of this that we're talking about actually real that's <laughs> that's the first yes. question you always have to ask yourself what do they want me to think they want me to think that there's an emergency at the border mm -hmm. okay they want me to think that but if, if, they're, if they really wanted to, 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 to stop illegal immigration, this term, they would, they would cut all the incentives to, to these folks for coming here. Like, you wouldn't need a wall. People would be like, to hell with the United States. There's nothing for me yep. there. I can't, I can't I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to get what I want by going there. So if they really wanted that to stop, then they would do that. Yeah. They wouldn't be building a wall. I am, I am inherently against walls because walls that keep people other people in. out are going to keep me <laughs> mm -hmm. in. You know, the United States canceled uh, uh, almost 400,000 passports last year because of back taxes. They, they removed people's ability, not their right. They, they stole our rights long ago, but they removed people's ability to leave the country mm -hmm. because they owed them money. Yep. Think about That's that. That's just a so big prison. So what do you think a wall yeah. is going to do? Yeah. Well, then I, so, think about the police yeah. state at the wall. So walls are, they're impotent if you don't have somebody to enforce them because people, they have ladders and they have shovels. Um, so what it would do is create such a police state at the wall. That to me is even scarier than just, you know, whatever type of structure they put up. Um, and I also inherently believe in the right to free movement. If I want to hire somebody and house them, 
the government has no right to tell me I can't, the government don't, shouldn't exist. But um, I just think it's a funny, it's funny because I see so many libertarians on different sides of that. And I was just curious. Um, well, I, I think people have the inherent right to defend their culture for sure. Um, and I, I know that if, if wow. there, if, if I perceive that there's like an invading force coming in to, to, to take over an area where, where I live and, and, and completely remove my culture or is hostile to me, my family and my culture, I have the, I have the right to oppose that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I don't take like a, a, a definitive stand on, any, on that particular issue because it's, it's so convoluted because we live in a control grid. If we, if, if we had volunteerism across the board, there wouldn't even, this wouldn't even be a thing. Right. But because generations past have, have, have built up our country to be what it is, then you, know, you, you have these types of problems. These types of problems are inherent in, in statism. You know? So it, it's, up to, it's up to us to, to help people to see past the, the, the systems that they know. Because most people will defend this system because it's all they know. And anything other than what they know terrifies Well, there are a lot of so, what ifs. And the funny thing is, I mean, you can read Praxology, um, Human Action, how, you know, a, a, a true free market would work, but it's still, a lot of that is conjecture. Oh, um, but at the same time, everything is a what if, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't say something might, something might happen that's bad down the road, so we're just going to do what's bad now. That's a really poor argument and an excuse, but we're so stuck in it that what ifs are so scary and we feel like, you know, we feel like the government's a safety net when the government's actually like a chain around your throat. But, you know, we we're conditioned to believe that from the time we're little. I was a statist as well. Um, so I don't know. I think the border argument, I, I find it, it's very strange. And also, I think it might be one of these, like, hey, look over here. This is going on. Meanwhile, we said we were going to leave Syria, and we're still leaving a 1,000 troops there. Um, but I digress. All right. So... Um, so you became a volunteerist. You're probably in the Ron Paul movement. I know you did perform a lot um, uh, with him. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I spent, I spent a, a number of years, you know, doing concerts all over the country for different uh, political advocacy groups like Oath Keepers, Campaign for Liberty, you name it. I, I did it. Um, and, and Ron Paul, uh, I, I did a, um, I, I did a, a, a performance with, with him in, Washington, D.C. in July of 2008. That was the first time I met Dr. Paul was at the Revolution March. Oh, cool. uh, and, and, and that was my first political event ever. It was like 15,000 people showed up for that. So it was, um, it, it really showed me there was this movement and I got, I just got heavily involved and I started, I started publishing songs in 2009. I, I put a, an EP out and that, that really made the rounds and, and, and was getting a lot of play on XM radio and a couple terrestrial uh, stations around the country. And it, it was doing well. And then uh, Dr. Paul asked me to participate in the second uh, presidential campaign pretty heavily. I did several dozen shows uh, or campaign events, I would say, but they were the bigger events. So I was, you know, it's funny. I went from playing in bars and clubs for like 30 to 50 people who were drunk and trying to get <laughs> laid and could, could have cared less that I was there to playing in front of three, three to 10,000 people who knew the words to my songs and were excited that I was there. So it was really like, you know, again, divine intervention saying, this is what you should be doing, not that. And so uh, I cut the cord with the, old, with the old way and just went full on freedom, you know, freedom tours, freedom shows, and, and just kept writing. I mean, you know, I'm not out there waving the flag. That's not what I'm about. You know, like, like I, I, I'm, I consider myself in, in, in many ways a patriot, but, you know, Frederick Douglass said that a patriot is a person who loves their country, but doesn't excuse its sins. So I'm the first guy out there saying everything that, that, that the US government is doing wrong. And, I, and I've, I've gone out far on a limb uh, to, that, to that degree. And I, I consider myself you know, fairly radical in that, in that uh -huh. uh, mindset. But I'm, I'm, uh, as, as a voluntarist, I'm also uh, about peace. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, here, here we go right here. I mean, I am, I am about, you know, nonviolence. And, and I think that there are lots of ways to, to demonstrate uh, the power of the public just by withdrawing our consent. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our consent to be governed is how they control mm -hmm. us. 
And if we withdraw our consent entirely, you know, the, the revolution can, can take place very peacefully with, you know, without any sort of, uh, without any sort of fanfare at all, if we just evolve out of them. I mean, I always tell people that like taxes are the, are the price we pay for failing to create a civilized society. Yeah. And, and there's the, the other quote that I love is, uh, the, the true measure of the state's success is that the word anarchy scares people and the word state does yeah, not. Yeah, that's a Tom Woods quote. Yes. Um, yeah, so I, that, that, that's where I'm coming from. And, and, but, but I recognize, I'm also a pragmatist, Tricia, and I recognize where we are. Yeah, I know where, we, where I want to get to, but I'll take any victory I can get moving us in the opposite direction of the way that we're going. That's why I still support candidates who are running for office. Because if they're up on a stage talking to a crowd about freedom, that's a win. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they get elected. I just care that they're changing the culture. And that's all I've ever really cared well, about. That, and I got that philosophy from Ernie Hancock. Yeah, no, uh, definitely changing the culture and perceptions. Because obviously we said if we completely dismantled the state or it imploded, which I, uh, it's possible, um, it would, people, there would be such a power vacuum that people wouldn't be able to organize themselves. So I think um, people make fun of pragmatists. But I think you can be principled and still uh, fight for little victories. Like um, my friend, uh, Mike Meharry, I went and saw um, him speak at the Ohio State House, and he was talking about nullification, which is basically decentralization. He's an anarchist, but he's like, you can say no to the federal government because the states are its parents. Well, that's using, you know, politicians and the political process, but it's decentralizing. And I don't know if we could do a little bit of that and a little bit of things here and there, and um, it would be re really awesome. But the best way to when you go and use like the Libertarian Party or whatever, it's a platform to change people's minds because like I said, that's where the power is, changing culture and mind. Absolutely. And I have to, okay, I'm going to give a shout out to my friend here because he wants to have you on his show, Jordan. And he says he'll talk less politics and more music. And his name is Nick, Nicky P. Him and his wife host Sounds Like Liberty podcast on um, Hogspad. Uh, so it's a really cool, it's fun and they're funny. So you can talk a little bit more about music. But everybody wants you to sing. So you got to sing a song. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So Pendulum is a big song um, that for you. You want to hear Pendulum? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I was tuned for a different one, uh -oh. so let me just tune okay, that Okay, go ahead. How you do that? Yeah, Pendulum is the one that started it all. You know, I uh, like I said earlier, I didn't know anything about anything when I wrote this. And I don't even claim that I wrote this. I just, I published it. But it was like a gift to me. It was like a divine inspiration. And it liter quite literally changed my life because after, after this song is when everything changed and it's never gone back the way it was. And not that I would even want it to. Can you hear that okay? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, let me, let me see if I can get a better picture. Here. Your headphones, uh, if you could keep them more stationary, they're doing a little fuzzy. I think it, well, it's your microphone. I don't have really, really good ones here, unfortunately. Let me see. I'll just, I'll try to hold, hold still. Okay. All right. No, I feel the music. I don't care like about crap. the buzz. Feel the music. Move. <laughs> All right, okay. cool. All right, so this is, this is, uh, this is Pendulum. This was the first uh, Liberty song that I wrote and uh, wrote it in the middle of the night. And the first time I played it, I played it for a, at, at a theater in December of 20, of 20 or 2006. And the whole, everybody in the theater stood up at the end in thunderous applause, and I thought they were going to boo me off the stage, but because uh, I didn't understand the song, and then I got the word that that you know God says these people know what this song is about. Do you see? They get it and find out, and that's what prompted me to go on my search. So here we go. I've been walking a tightrope. Between fact and fiction Been wrestling with demons In small bottled prisons Been talking to sinners That claim to be Christian Been shouting at leaders That claim to be listening And a pendulum swings from The left to the right Its momentum increases the need for the fight Like a moment of blindness In a lifetime of sight And I am caught somewhere 
in the middle I saw a president blind to the needs of his people Saw a camel that passed through the eye of a needle Saw a group of old men whose money was evil Saw a cross breaking free from the cage of a steeple Saw beggars and cripples dying in squalor A son whose sins had exceeded his father Saw a nation of sleepers whose dreams were forgotten And a bushel of apples from a tree that was rotten And a perfume sweetens from the left to the right Its momentum increases the need for the fight Like a blindfold when it's time to walk toward the light And I am lost somewhere in the middle I heard the echo of suffering in the valley of laughter Heard the rumble of earthquakes far under the water I heard a court jester whose fork tongue was twisted He told us of dangers that never existed Heard voices that claim to be moral and righteous Whose lies and deceit were all dark and contagious a talk of a country that valued its freedom But when I protested I was arrested and beaten And a pendulum swings from the left to the right Its momentum increases the weight and the height But if nobody's listening, is anyone right? And I can't seem to find the key to the riddle. I met a young woman with a baby inside her. I looked, but there wasn't a safe place to hide her. I met an old man with a face like a mirror. He showed me his sadness so I could see clearer. Met an arrogant leader who robs us and cheats us. He pretends that his orders come directly from Jesus. When he sends out our children to strange foreign soil to kill for the right. To monopolize oil I'm raising my voice against the house of derision That murders our freedom with short-sighted vision I'll sing a new song about civilization And the palace of wisdom And the death of a nation I lift off the veil that's hiding the holy and remind all the people that change happens slowly. I'll scream out a name to the echoes of heaven and pray that the world don't end up where it's heading. And a pendulum swings from the left to the right. Its momentum decreases. The end is in sight, but there's a lunatic handling our future tonight. And I am not somewhere in the middle, somewhere here in the middle, somewhere in the middle. Jordan. Thank you. Uh, That's pendulum. What's the audio? Is it is it is it okay? It's, actually, is it tolerable? it's pretty good. Yeah, no, uh, it, nothing. We don't have a big studio set up here, but it sounds good. It sounds good to me. Okay, because if not, I could I could just do it with the phone microphone if that would be better. Um, no, I, I think it sounds good. Uh, okay, cool. 
Hey, let, 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 let me Do get something. rid of a little bit of background noise. Hang That's on. okay. I have kids too, and I'm going to have my daughter check on my other daughter to make sure she's not on the internet because everything got really slow all of a sudden. She's my producer tonight. I don't have the fancy guys from Anarchy Media doing this, so thank you, Dan. No worries. No worries. <laughs> um, this, is, this is fun, though. Yeah. Sure. Oh, it is. I, can, cause I, I have everybody's comments coming up as it goes. Yeah, and thank you, Hody, for host, uh, putting that because I've I'm so slow on my laptop right now that I wasn't able to link that. So Hody Johns put uh, <clears throat> freeshafer.com and then, hey, Hody, you're going to be my like tech per person from afar. If you could link Jordan Page Music in the comments too, and I'll do it afterwards and it'll be up. And um, so that'll be cool. Uh, I do want to talk about your new song because this is really important. Great. Let's do that. Um, so Schaefer Cox, some people might know the story, some might not. Uh, might not. So if you want to just expound a little bit on uh, how you came to know about it and what touched your heart and then what you're doing with your uh, music right now in regards to helping us. It's a, it's a great question. So I had heard Schaefer Cox's name, God, a dozen times over the, over the years uh, from different people, from posts. But for some reason, you know, I don't know why I never clicked the link. I never looked into it. I, did, I didn't know... Um, I didn't know anything about him. I just knew that he was a prisoner and it wasn't, it wasn't on my radar. I had so many other things going on um, and, and just never took the time to look into it. But Schaefer is, is a political prisoner. He was like a Ron Paul libertarian uh, up in Alaska mm -hmm. and he was running for office. He got 38% of the vote the first time he ran for a house seat. Uh, this, this guy was like a, Ron, like a young Ron Paul. People were drawn to him. And would you know just tons of people would show up anytime he spoke anywhere, did anything. He would just attract these huge crowds because uh, he was really speaking to people's hearts and to their mm -hmm. concerns. And eloquent speaker, amazing writer, and, and just a wonderful example. So he, as he was running for office, he learned about a, a widespread child sex trafficking and drug trafficking ring connected to CPS, the courts, the police in Alaska, all the way up to higher levels of government. And he did the one thing that you don't do, and that's name names. And he started calling organizations out, individuals out. And for two years, the FBI had him under surveillance. They, they sent two career criminals uh, to infiltrate his inner circle, which they were successful at doing. And they were recording him for two years, trying to get him to incite him to violence, to some violent act. They wanted him to, to do something to get himself into trouble. But the, the problem was the Schaefer's a volunteerist. Mm -hmm. He believes in nonviolence, doesn't believe in aggression. And almost a little and, bit of a uh, pacifist in some regard, because it would have been justified in some, in some circumstances. Sure, absolutely. Now, I mean, there, there is a recording of him saying that if, if it came down to me or them, if, if they're shooting at me and my children, then then yeah, I mean, I'll shoot back. Yeah, you shoot yeah. back if they're shooting yeah. at you and your kids. Um, I mean, that's his, his duty as a father is to protect mm -hmm. his family. But that was the only, that was the only evidence they had, uh, uh, you know, against him was a hypothetical if, well, then yeah, yeah. I, I, I guess so, you know. And so they, um, several attempts were made on Schaefer's life and his family. And eventually he tried to escape the state of Alaska and was, uh, was sent to, uh, to an ambush by one of these informants. And uh, it's, it's believed that they were going to try to kill him because an unmarked gun was plant, was tri they tried to plant an unmarked gun on him to justify them shooting him. But, um, but it, didn't, it, didn't take, it didn't happen that way. And he was, he was uh, ambushed by a SWAT team and arrested. Uh, when they don't have anything to charge you with, they charge you with conspiracy. conspiracy and that's mm -hmm. what... <laughs> That's what he was charged with. He had he had some bogus weapons charges um, that we could talk about, but you know the the, the big the big charges were a conspiracy to murder federal agents and solicitation to murder federal agents. So during the Alaska state trial, uh, the, tri the the case was thrown out for lack of evidence. They literally like played all the tapes, and it was thrown out because there was nothing to charge this guy with. Like it was nonsense. And while he was still incarcerated, the federal government came in superseding its own jurisdiction and the federal judge to hear this farce 
So they brought one out of retirement who was an older judge, hard of hearing, and I'm sure they gave him instructions on what they wanted him to do. And, they, uh, and, and he refused to allow the tapes that would have set Schaefer free. He refused them, uh, 